It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's January 7th, and that means it's time for Tommy yeah. Chen, No Business and Politics. And uh, Tommy Galop, your morning mayor at AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, and find computers everywhere, of course. My co host, Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing, uh, still in Cantaloupes, looks like. Uh, Cantaloupes, Canada, making this uh, uh, absolutely a uh, International show, right? Yeah. Well, we try to. Yes, and, 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 yes, indeed. And the markets are trying to be international too. The uh, U.S. dollar is still weakening, but yeah. the Dow's up a, an amazing two hundred and forty after the cl- final uh, uh, approval mm-hmm. of your president. And thirty-one, thirty-one thousand seventy. So they broke the thirty-one thousand mark, and Standard yeah. Poor's is thir- uh, three thousand eight hundred and three, up fifty-five mm-hmm. and a half, and Nasdaq one hundred two ninety-eight at. 12,921. So, yeah, everything seems to be moving on yeah. note now. The global markets are all... Pro- we'll, do a, we'll do a market at the end. Yes, I understand. That. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just acknowledging what happened at 4 a.m. this morning and letting people know that uh, we're paying attention to all of it. Uh, okay. Will we proceed with uh, your plans today? Yeah, we'll have a lot to talk about politically on Saturday. Uh but in the meantime, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, it's very important uh, that you uh, subscribe and ring the little notification bell. That way uh, you'll be notified anytime uh, Tom and Shane are on. So we'll be happy to uh, do that for you. And uh, we really appreciate you uh, tuning in to uh, chat with us this morning. And of course, uh, uh, we're here every Tuesday and uh, Thursday uh, for a business. We'll uh, take a business topic and help you um, and your small business or home-based business succeed. Our political shows, of course, are on Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. You can listen to those anywhere in the world uh, at KMMSAM.com. You don't have to join anything, leave any information, no emails, no credit cards, nothing like that. You just go over there and click listen live, and you are on with us. You can call us, you can text us, whatever. Uh, if you missed any of our past shows, of course, they're at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast and please share that with your friends. Uh, we would uh, we would greatly uh, appreciate that. So um, by all means, uh, yeah, we need that uh, a lot. So, well, Shane, uh, today we uh, we're going to talk about uh, incorporation and uh, business structure. So very important uh, for your business because uh, uh, there are tax implications, there are um, legal implications. Uh, you don't want to be sued, probably. <laughs> At least I would, I would guess you don't want to be sued. So, <laughs> but if you are, uh, incorporation will give you some uh, some relief, I should say. So if you're um, the big question of the day, I guess, is should you incorporate your small business? And if you do, what type of incorporation do you have? Uh, What do they have in Canada? Uh, You have something. I mean, you have corporations, obviously, but are they structured like the American corporations are? Yes, they are. Um, uh, Globally, they are principally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Start the same way. I, what, what you have is a, a predication of law and precedent, which is principally held in your country in Delaware. Um, mm-hmm. It's not uh, restricted uh, in Canada. Each province deals with uh, in, uh, corporate issues of, of law. But uh, mm-hmm. in uh, federal and international cases, it's Delaware in your country. And then, of course, state mm-hmm. um, and states deal with state registry state registries of companies, whether you have a uh, the basic two in state, territory, or commonwealth uh, countries or sole proprietorship mm-hmm. or a trust. And so right. well, we'll be talking about the different types of sole proprietorship, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and partnerships and general partnerships and so forth, limited and liability um, companies and so forth. But right. no, yeah. it's basically, uh, uh, English common law over the last uh, 400 years has, has established uh, sole proprietorship and trust trust as the principle uh, of uh, corp- incorporation. And then you go to the more general examples that uh, do exist in some companies, countries and others, as you said, for tax reasons, principally and liability. Liability yeah. is the biggest one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are general there are specific areas 
um, of uh, structure that you can get into um, that we should talk about because liability uh, can or can be established directly to you or uh, separate you by what we, is referred to as a Chinese wall. A Chinese wall okay. means between you and somebody else, a third party, there's, mm-hmm. uh, there's a company that they to prevent them to get to you and right. that limits your liability. So, so we'll go into, we'll go into all of that with the various uh, mm-hmm. uh, structures that we have. Um, we want to start with sole proprietorship. And this is, uh, this is one where uh, you don't have to do much of anything to be a sole proprietor. You just have to open your doors and start doing business. The, uh, the biggest uh, issue with sole proprietorship is that uh, you hang everything out there to be taken if you're sued. Uh, that's the that's the big issue with the sole proprietorship. There's nothing to, uh, there's no separation between the business and your personal, um, uh, uh, what, your personal assets. Uh, your home, your savings, uh, everything would be up for grabs if you were sued and your business structure is a sole uh, proprietorship. That's right. So that's so the proprietorship falls under the corporate def- definition. Um, there are principally three corporate corporate definitions: the corporation itself, professional corporation, and DBAs or doing business as. Mm-hmm. So, uh, sole proprietorship is basically doing business as uh, right. a person or entity that is different from the person that's actually running it. So, because uh, you you may decide to have a company, you have a name and marketing program, which we talked about last. On Tuesday, but you know, as Tom says, uh, you you have a lot more exposure and you have a lot more uh, liability. So um, most uh, lawyers and accountants mm-hmm. will look at uh, the the size or the you know where you're at right now with your business or where you tend to go with it. Um, it, it in a matter of speaking, if if you're a third party to a business, uh, say you it's a cosmetic company and your sales rep for it you know most generally you'll do a, set it up as a sole proprietorship initially because there's no paperwork or filing and do business as mm-hmm. that company with you as a uh, salesperson for it but if that starts evolving into greater income um, you would then under that set up a company um, and then do get an agreement with that company to, you know, to be doing it um, through a, a limited uh, liability company yeah. or through a partnership or through um, a corporation, as we said. Yeah, I would not uh, advise you to be a sole, a sole proprietorship for very long uh, because it's just too dangerous. If you create a product and it injures someone or, um, you know, you have a landscaping business and you trash uh uh, you know, if something runs into the garage or breaks a window in the home or something like that. Uh, they can come after your home, uh, you know, your savings. Uh, everything you have is up for grabs. So, yeah, uh, it's very important you consult a lawyer in terms yeah. of things of that issue, liability, and also an, an accountant with uh, not just the liability, but the benefits you may be losing by not being a you know uh, some form of corporate structure because uh, that's where all the that's where all the bonuses are yeah that's uh, true we'll we'll talk about those as we go along the other thing important is that uh, you may not be able to get a business bank account if you're a sole proprietor Uh, they may uh, not see you as a as a total business because you got no business license you've got no uh, you know you've got no business name uh, whatever you're just you know you're just operating your business so uh, in canada, uh, in canada the, uh, the provincial law does provide for you to set up a dba doing business as mm-hmm. uh, with the name of the company and and as you uh, signing with regards to that because very often when you find yourself in, in enrolled as a salesperson or sales rep you will have an agreement with that company and you, in canada you can take that agreement to the bank to show them that you're doing business as a sales rep at this company so, you know, I, I don't know what that is in, in your state, but here you can you can set up a bank account. Mm-hmm. Um, well, as a sole proprietor, you're still able to get a trade name, uh, not a trademark. Don't confuse that, a trade name. Uh, it can also be hard to raise money because you can't sell stock and banks are hesitant to lend 
to sole proprietorships too. So um, <clears throat> benefit they can but from incorporating specifically. Yes. Yeah, they can be um, they can be a good choice for low risk businesses and owners who want to test <clears throat> test their business before uh, farming a, a formal uh, formal business. I should say. <laughs> Easy for me to say. And the other side of the coin, too, is in particularly in Canada and I know in the United States, once you make the step, there's another aspect to this. And that is whether you do it by state and, and or province in Canada or federally in both countries. I mean, if you mm -hmm. set up a federal corporation, which we will again, the, the, the laws apply differently to the same types like a general partnership or an, a limited partnership. You can form that in your state or in your province, but in, in forming it federally in your country is a lot different. So these things become more expensive, uh, more provocative, mm -hmm. but and also more beneficial as you move through the process of growth. But it's a matter of growth and, and ongoing success that makes these real decisions. <coughs> yeah. Well, next we want to talk about a partnership. Uh, we talked about this a little bit on Tuesday, but uh, the big thing we want to emphasize with a partnership is uh, you don't want to have a 50-50 partnership, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You can have whatever you want. Well, but let's, define it. let's define it for everyone. First, um, partnerships fall into four groups. You have the general partnership. You have the limited uh, partnership, the limited liability partnership, and the limited liability limited partnership. And as Tom was saying, that uh, you, you don't necessarily want to have anything. In, you want to be particularly in control uh, any partnership that you have. So please continue. Yeah. Well, the reason being is that uh, somebody has to make the final decision on things. You've got to designate someone in that partnership who's going to be the leader of that partnership. And, uh, you know, if, if you object to uh, their uh, situation, uh, you've given them the power to override you and go ahead with that, with that decision. And, um, uh, otherwise, if you're arguing back and forth, uh, that arguing is just going to escalate further and further and further. And eventually, um, you know, it's going to harm the business. So it's best to have, usually what happens is the partnership with the most power is the one who brings the most money to the partnership. So they have the biggest investment in the partnership. So a general partnership is important for you to understand because it's the weakest of the types of partnerships that exist. Um, a, a partnership is in uh, is which uh, partners are uh, jointly and separately liable for the debts of the partnership. Now, when it's when they when the law says in your in your country in mine, mm -hmm. jointly and separately, it depend it depends entirely on how you uh, take on debt or you make determinations of expenditures under your business plan that we talked about. And, uh, but the important thing is that in most U.S. states, um, it can be created, a general partnership can be created without requiring a public filing. Uh, the partners may themselves be legal uh, entities or individuals in this case for the, for the general partnership. So mm. a general partnership is probably the weakest of all the types of partnerships that, that exist out there as a component to make a decision. Again, your lawyer and accountants would, you know, or lawyer and accountant would probably give you the advice. And very often is again, determined on the success and the growth of uh, the success of uh, your company and how you're proceeding with your corporate vision and so forth. And especially with regards to your, um, you know, your financial statement that you'd set out. And if you're, you're, you're meeting your goals that you'd originally set out in that financial statement month to month. So then we got, we talk about the limited partnership. Um, so there is in this case uh, where one partner is the general partner and that is what uh, Tom is referencing. And that makes that individual the basic uh, kingmaker of decisions and, uh, you know, no decision is indecision and to solve problems, you have to make decisions. So uh, now the limited partnership has an interesting aspect to it in that in the uh, guy, uh, the um, the um, uh, when, when you set this up, you set up guidelines of the partnership. And under those guidelines, you make a determination of the uh, liability that is shared or not. So limited partners generally do not participate in, in, in management of the entity um, or the business. So meaning 
you you may have partners in in the business that work for the company itself but they're not managing or operating it that's that that's uh, the importance of a limited partnership is one person one person is basically the general manager because mm -hmm. it's big enough to have a board it's not big enough to have a, you know um it's, you know different established officers in the company yeah well the other thing too uh taxes we need to talk about in the sole proprietorship that we talked about earlier the taxes just flow through to your regular tax return uh you do a schedule c uh on that and all of your business expenses and uh income go in there uh, so you don't file a separate return. Uh, same with the partners. Well, the partnership, you probably would file a separate return. I'm not sure on that one, but uh, it does flow through. The taxes do flow through to your uh, regular tax return, as does a limited liability corporation. Uh, that also uh, does, the, uh, does the same thing. Now, another really important thing, because the limited liability corporation uh, creates a corporate veil between you, your personal assets, and the company. So if the company is sued for anything other than uh, doing something illegal, uh, your, your personal assets are protected from, they can only sue the company. They can't sue you individually unless you do something uh, illegal. Uh, Bernie Madoff, for example, uh, would be an example, or Enron, the guys that went to prison uh, for that. So the carpet veil doesn't protect criminal activity, but it will protect you if you're sued or go bankrupt or whatever. Uh, people can only come after the assets of the company, not your personal assets, not your home, not your car, not your savings. So that's the big reason uh, for uh, incorporation. And the limited liability is real easy. Uh, it's usually one page. Um, I think in Montana, it's 75 bucks. Uh, to become a limited liability company. And, um, you know, that will protect you. Now, the other really, really... Make, make an observation about the limited liability partnership that's really important and the premise for it. Uh, the, the reason for the different partnerships is because they're <clears throat> basically the initial structure uh, of uh, building or setting up a company for you um, as an individual or with partners. But the limited liability partnership can expand to very large size. We'll, we'll get into that because then you would, that would be become a limited liability company. But limited uh, liability partnerships uh, came about for another very specific reason. And that is it limits each individual partner. So uh, the great thing about a partnership is you establish the shares of the profits uh, from the company. So while you're running the costs and expenses through the company, at the end of the day, you're expecting to have a profit. So limited liability partnerships are shared profits and they're established in the guidelines that you set out. Now the liability side of it is also set out. So if at the end of the day, year, quarter, depending on how the guidelines are set out in your partnership agreement, um, if there's a loss to the partnership, then it's shared equally as well. So this is why this, the limited liability partnership is so important because you want to make sure you share your li liabilities if you're going to share the assets. You, know, you, don't, you don't want to be in a position where you've got partners and, you know, they, they, they take their you know, two partners, they take their third, but when there becomes a liability, they don't put their third up. So that's really the big importance or the relative importance of a limited liability partnership. You both share in the benefits uh, or profits and the liabilities you have to cover. Yeah. Um, and the other very, very important thing about uh, any corporation uh, you form uh, if I don't know you're a corporation, all bets are off. You're not protected by the corporate veil if your customers do not know you're a corporation. So LLC or company or Inc. goes on business cards. It goes on invoices. It goes on your vehicle. It goes on. It goes everywhere. It goes on your building. Uh, you, there could be no... Um, uh, no, uh, you know, it, <laughs> that you're a, that you're a corporation. There'd be no confusion that you're a corporation. 
That's right. And, you know, mm-hmm. f- uh, for for the first time uh, in your life, you may find yourself being able to compete with academia. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the Eagle Man has pointed out, you know, those ac- academics, they love to put all their uh, markings on their cards right. and, and uh, hang them behind their wall. You know, all the diplomas um, or if they've gotten a doctorate in philosophy or a doctor in literature um, yeah. or written a paper in history or um, uh, some science. Um, or a medical doctor. So by having your name um, in the name of your company and what type of uh, partnership it is, like an LLP or an LLP or an LP or just a general partnership, you know, is, is a, it's an important fact. And it establishes to wh- whoever you've handed that card to because uh, your first communication with someone is very important in this particular case. Business cards aren't just, you know, important for you to network and for you to market. They're also per- there to protect you um, as an individual with regards to the type of company that you work under. So it's important that you have business cards and it's important that you make every effort, every effort to hand cards out to people that you meet. I always give them two, tell them to put one in their wallet and one in their office. So, you know, the, the reason I say that is because then if any time you have a problem, People will say, you know, a lawyer, you know, coming after you might say, well, how do you know you gave him a card? Well, I give everyone actually two cards so that, you know, that's a really great comeback if you're ever unfortunately in that position. So it's consistent with always telling the truth. If you always give someone the card, you know, then you know that that's just been the experience with uh, everyone you've ever dealt with. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. And depending on your business, um, everyone within walking distance of your home should have your business card. And also, uh, it goes in every bill I pay. Um, You know, uh, I realize a lot of people pay online now, but, you know, if you uh, go into every bar you go into, you know, you just calmly just uh, drop one at the counter. Leave a card on the leave a card on the table. Yeah. Well, or yeah, on the bar or even stores, yeah. you know, if you go into a store, even, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, you, a little uh, corner st- shop that you go in to buy something, you know, that you need, yeah. you know, drop a yeah. card on the, on the, on the counter and yeah, mm-hmm. always, yeah, get them out there. You, you're not, littering, right. you're not littering mm-hmm. your, your uh, networking. This, this yeah. is the whole thing about marketing. That's uh, very important to learn. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do reverse shoplifting when I travel. Uh, if I go into a bookstore and my book's not there, I leave one. <laughs> there you go. I can go, well, boy, boy, we don't have this, but price is on here and I've got a barcode. So, boom, we'll sell you the book. And, that, and so, that's a good idea. If you go in yeah, and see the most sure. popular books at the front of the store, you know, open a couple of them and throw a card in. And people you can do buy that. Them, yeah. And then as they read the book, all of a sudden they'll find your business card and go, oh, yeah, yeah, there you are. You're, wow, that's <laughs> sort of cool. And yeah, why not, man? Yeah, yeah. I don't believe me. People will look at it just because all of a sudden they found your business card in there, and then it's yeah. a bookmarker. Wow, well, that's even better. Yeah. Well, the lemon liability is probably the cheapest and uh, most protective way, uh, unless you're going to have stockholders or things like that. But if if you're going to run a landscaping business, a barber shop, uh, you know, whatever. Um, the LLC is probably uh, the way you want to go. Now, the other important thing we need to talk about is just because you've declared yourself one type of partnership doesn't mean that you can't change. You can change at any time. Um, Absolutely. You get a, yeah, you can get a lawyer to uh, assist you with that. And uh, because uh, closing out one uh, one company and starting another one or moving, moving uh, the company from one corporation to another, uh, there are rules about where the money goes and who gets what and all of that. So, um, and, but, and, you, and, but you're and, not locked into one. Right. And as we mentioned before, the limited liability company is one of the more popular companies in, in, in corporately around the world. Mm-hmm. But it's important to mention that it doesn't say limited profitable companies. It says limited liability companies. Right. Yeah. Now, again, we'll redefine that uh, because liability in a, a, a limited liability company in LLC is shared as are the profits. Now, there are principally three, the limited liability company itself, the professional limited liability company. And then, of course, there's uh, just the uh, um, LLC. Um, but th- then they're broken down into a dozen, uh, you know, other areas of expertise or may be defined. 
again, that would be between you and your lawyer and you and your accountant. In other words, if you're uh, wanting to set up a law firm or a dental office, like a professional in a professional business, because uh, one of the problems that you want to protect, uh, one of the problems you have in wanting to protect yourself from liability is your profession. You, you know, if you have issues um, that result in uh, failure of your LLC because of a case as a lawyer um, or something that happened um, not, not untoward uh, with regards to a dent dental issue that you had, maybe a product you used or something, um, or a shared liability that you because of a product you use, you don't you don't want it to affect your licensing as a professional. Uh, all professionals are all licensed by the state. Or, or the federal government, where individuals that are in business aren't necessarily licensed. So, again, uh, one of these great aspects of limited liability is to limit the liability of your professional license. So, again, that's important. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the biggest thing is you want to you want to separate your personal assets from the company, and that's what uh, the LLC. Uh, principally does so that if you are sued or go bankrupt, uh, whoever you owe money to can only come after the business assets, not your personal assets. They can't come after your home, can't come after your savings, uh, can't come on, uh, you know, stocks and bonds, investments, whatever, whatever you have. Now, if you're a sole proprietor, they can come after all of those things. They can come after everything you have. So, you may want to think about a, a limited liability partnership or limited liability company uh, to start with because it's very inexpensive. But I said it's about 75 bucks here in Montana. It's a one page form. And, um, you know, you register your business name as uh, many companies uh, require a uh, when I was in California, uh, you have to apply for what is called a fictitious business name. Even though it's a real business, they call it a fictitious business name. And you had to publish that in a business newspaper that you were starting this business. And if anybody had an objection to it, uh, to your business or to your name use or whatever, uh, they would come forward. And then after the two or three weeks of publication, then uh, you were you were a leg a legitimately a business. Uh, the other thing, uh, business licenses, uh, there's no, uh, as far as I know, there's no uh, county business license in Montana. Uh, so if you're in the county, you wouldn't necessarily have to have a business license. Uh, you would have your business registered with the state. Uh, if you're in the city, uh, there is a, uh, you do need a business license to do business in the city. And some uh, some business or some counties, I've had them tell me that, uh, well, you've got to have a business license in our city, even though you live in the county to do business in the city. Now, you know, I don't know if that's right or not. That would be a question for your attorney. But uh, you may have to uh, get multiple business licenses in wherever you do business. So that's that may or may not happen. That's why making these decisions as you move through this process is so important. Right. And uh, that's why your financial statement and your income statement are so important, because now you may have to readjust it. Mm -hmm. Once you step into the fold of not being a sole proprietor or being on your, on your own or doing business as uh, uh, a sole proprietor, then you have added costs. And those costs are legal and uh, accounting. Now, oddly enough, um, to this day mm -hmm. still, and, and for the last 2,000 years, uh, the only industries or the only professions that have no limit on what they charge you or, uh, or what the rate charge is for you for their time, the only ones are lawyers and accountants. Everybody else has some kind of guidelines that have been yeah. established by governments as to what they can charge people. Not accountants, not lawyers. So right. you have to be very careful and you have to spend some time. You need to talk to other friends that have had experience with lawyers and accountants. Sit down, have a drink with them, have a conversation with them, learn from them. It's always better to talk to the smartest person in the room or more importantly, learn from someone who's made mistakes that you don't want to. So once you start engaging in the need of lawyers and accountants, it's going to affect your income statement. And it's going to come your financial statement, which, again, I'm repeating myself, but it's important for you to know. You'll now have to go back and take the time. And thank goodness you have a computer 
but then you have to add those additional costs in against your profits uh, for what you intend to pursue. That's why making this choice is big because it's a big uh, mm -hmm. uh, cost to what you're doing. And yep. uh, you have to weigh that uh, in every manner that you can. Because once you move past the limited liability companies, you move toward the corporate companies. And that's a lot yeah. um, more different than yeah. uh, the limited liability company. Yeah. Before we go there, we've got a few uh, comments uh, we need to put up. Uh, Jim says uh, LLCs are very easy to do. And uh, I would agree, Jim, uh, one page form. 75 bucks fill out the info and send it in and boom uh, you're incorporated so uh and over the years uh he's said uh, full s corp and uh now a license so uh, yeah we'll uh, be talking about that and uh yeah can cause uh, real problems 50 50 partnerships so uh, we would encourage you to uh, decide on who is going to have the final say and uh, if you're uh, going to be partners, uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, bands always have a leader, you know, <laughs> they've always got somebody that calls the shots, you know, or one or two guys and the other guys, eh, we'll just play our stuff, just pay us, you know, that's all we care about. So, so yeah, we're, uh, we're doing okay there. So. All right, uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about the big corporation: uh, Coca-Cola, <laughs> Procter and Gamble, Exxon. Uh, Elon Musk just became the richest guy in the world this morning. So, <laughs> so these are these are companies where uh, they want stockholders. Uh, you got to raise money. So uh, this is the best way to do it: is to. Uh, uh, you know how much how much control the um, stockholders have is based on how much stock you issue. Absolutely, and um, there, there's a lot of designation to that as a private corporation, and we need to distinguish it because there's two forms: a private corporation or a public corporation. Now, there's two principal types of corporations. Of course, there's the corporation itself, or, or Inc. Uh, incorporated. And then, of course, there's the professional corporation. Professional corporations are set up by people with professions, as we delineated earlier in the, uh, uh, the PLCs. So people such as attorneys, architects, accountants, and doctors will set up a professional corporation. Um, now, they're limited to what they can do because they're a professional corporation, but they can expand if they want. Now, a corporation itself becomes um, its own entity. This has been established by precedent in law, and it's been established by pre precedent in business uh, globally. So while there are different um, uh, types of corporations, uh, like in the United States, um, there are, you know, different, there's 51 corporate chartered jurisdictions in the United States for each state. So again, you can incorporate in a state or you can incorporate fe federally. Um, there's also suffix, suffix, suffixes, <laughs> suffixes, 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 whatever. Uh, there are different types of corporations for tax reasons. Right. And uh, I'll let uh, the Eagle Man take over that issue that uh, he'll probably talk about. And they're defined, and the predicate and precedent for that is under a Connecticut law, where most U.S. corporate law is uh, decided and argued. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me give me, let me get me back comments? up here. I'm back up here. <laughs> let's get both of us up here. What do you say? <laughs> okay. So we're talking, uh, right now, yeah. uh, Tom seems to be working to rejoin us. He's, he's got on his, no, I didn't uh, go away. The, the I didn't go Corp, away. I which just, is yeah. basically <laughs> the acknowledgement that you're a corporation. Yeah. And then there's different types. There's the A Corp and, and mm -hmm. he'll go through the list, uh, to give you better understanding of it. Yeah. Um, the, the important thing about uh, a corporation uh, and moving to this level is, is now you're looking at the success that you've set, set out in your financial statement and your income statement, um, where you're now moved past hundreds of thousands and millions. And you're, you're literally in the frame of millions in sales and a million in uh, uh, costs of, of operating. And you want to expand but you need additional um, um, funding for that because the primary benefit of most corporations is a profit from anywhere 
uh, as little as a 5% of their gross income or gross sales to as much as 20%. So uh, depending on where you're at, the cost of going public for uh, uh, lawyers and accountants primarily um, will require that you bring in um, outside investors. A lot of people sometimes are successful in doing this just with friends and family, depending the nature of the friends and family they have and uh, how successful they've been and are able to uh, take money and risk it with you. Um, uh, the other way you can do it, you can do it with bank financing. If you have had a great r- relationship with your bank and uh, whatever loans or debt you've taken, even personally or, or professionally, um, you've handled well and you have a great credit rating. But most banks now today tend to stay away from investing directly in the first round of funding uh, in corporations. So that's where you look for the angel investor. And these are professional investors that actually have funds. Um, They're broken actually into two. One is an investment banker. An investment banker is primarily an individual that has money to invest. So that's who you'll look for. And they'll have different types of funds um, that they have set together or put brought together that allow them to take those funds and invest them, you know, at some risk or at great risk. And uh, the, the great thing about that is that they have the opportunity to make that decision on their own and very often negotiate with you. Now, those negotiations become very important because now they're discussing the issuance of shares and percentage ownership of your company. And it's not just for the short term that you need to discuss this with investment bankers. It's the long term. The other side of that are merchant bankers. Now, a merchant banker you can do a deal with because a merchant banker is someone who has a company like yours who's searching for money to fund it. So you can either reach out to a merchant banker who will find you money or you can look out, reach out directly to an investment banker who will give you money. But to do both, <clears throat> you have to be incorporated. You have to set up the, uh, uh, the, uh, the right to issue stock. <clears throat> you have to have a <clears throat> trust company, <clears throat> excuse me, or a, a acknowledged uh, a company that uh, uh, registers and transfers your stock. Uh, this is not something you can do individually. It has to be segregated. So this, again, is one of these additional costs on your financial statement and your income statement uh, that you have. Uh, There are some very well-known and established companies that do this. Uh, Very often at the beginning as a company, you may pick a trust company that will do it for you. Again, your lawyers and accountants will uh, direct you in this area of of how to do this. So uh, we'll take a minute here and uh, I'm just going to check and see where we are on the stream yard. And Tom is right back. So he says, Yeah, I'm back. I didn't leave. I didn't leave. I didn't uh, leave. I so we'll leave. continue on with this. I didn't and, leave. Uh, to have this discussion. Um, when you're starting to put together these corporations um, th- that you feel are, are important for yourself uh, with regards to your future plans, remember you're looking now in anticipation of what your financial and income statements have said. You're looking out five years at least. Um, generally speaking, uh, a, a private corporation may remain private forever. But if it does decide to go public, it is definitely in the realm of a two to four year pro- process. Now, the primary reason for this is that the, those angel investors, those initial investors that have come in, they know that under the guidelines of the Securities and Exchange Commission, which you have to register with to get this process done, um, not the Treasury Department, but the Securities and Exchange Commission through a Securities and Exchange Commission attorney separate attorney from your business attorney or corporate attorney because now you're getting big and there's more law that you have to follow and your accounting firm may or may not deal with public companies so you may have to change your accounting firm another decision you may have wanted to look at at the beginning is does the accounting firm you have now are they able to take you to that public stage because if you're going to spend two or three years with a small or regional accounting firm that can't help you go public then you know you've you, you've got to establish a long-term relationship with people, networking for the long term. So now you've you're faced with the reality two, three, four years down the road where it is time to consider going public. 
and it is for the additional capital you're going to require. And you may now have to adjust your business plan and your financial statement and income statement to reflect you, the growth pattern that you're seeking, the additional income that you're going to require or funding you're going to require to expand your operation, particularly if you're producing something. Uh, that, that is always a major uh, difficulty in most areas of business is uh, the, the cost of infrastructure. Uh, that's why we always look at companies that we invest in uh, as to whether they're vertically integrated, you know, like the oil industry. There are companies like Exxon that produce the product uh, from the ground, which is expensive oil. They ship that oil expensive. They, sh they manufacture that oil in plants expensive, ship it again to then sell it to independents uh, who, who provide you gasoline. And uh, so these are different aspects, again, that you'll learn as you move through this process. Can you hear me? In uh, defining the profession, you hear me? That is not as uh, difficult because Can you, hear you already me? have a pretty good idea exactly where you're going to do what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And most office, most often, uh, professional corporations um, are established as in the legal industry because they've already uh, merged with uh, uh, other law firms as LLCs and become a regional law firm. And very often uh, they may want to decide to form a corporation nationally. So they become a national law firm and can be equally represented because um, just as an example, uh, a lawyer may be called to the bar in Montana, but can't practice law in Louisiana or New York unless he goes to the bar there. So you may have a great client who's a corporation um, in this law firm. But they may have products across the United States now. So they need to have lawyers in every state that can represent them if necessary. Uh, the other aspect of uh, professional mm -hmm. corporations that are so important, Shit. too, are, you know, liabilities and, and the type of liabilities that can fall upon them. And uh, individual liabilities uh, where you have action taken by an individual or another company um, are different than joint actions that are taken by a large number of people. And we've seen this happen in a number of cases, uh, sometimes too late in, in, in cases where companies have ended up actually having assets um, but are bankrupt. And uh, uh, as a person that's owed money, you, you want to try and recover as much of uh, uh, the money that you're owed by this now bankrupt company. So these are all the aspects of decision making you have to go through as you decide on what type of uh, company that you want to have. Um, and the, the thing is that uh, when you're looking at a lot of this, um, you can go and because of the glory of the internet, um, you can just uh, go to Bing or, or Google and Google it. Or you, of course you can Wikipedia. Now I know people will tell you that Wikipedia is not a fountain of great knowledge. Well, in, in fact it is. There are certain things that, that aren't, uh, conspiratorial um, that are just uh, established law or established fact, um, such as what we're talking about. So you can learn from uh, or go to Wikipedia, look up your state and get all your information on the different types of uh, stru corporate structures we've talked about today. Um, you can also get information on Wikipedia about uh, national structure. You can also go to different uh, areas um, of the internet. You can go to the SEC. They have their own website. It's a very tremendous website. Uh, they have a huge inventory of information for you to read. You have to take the time. If you're going to look at that two, three years from now, or even now, if a great idea is good, you need to go re read uh, and learn uh, from the, the SEC website and the United States Treasury, uh, another great website. Uh, your government has uh, provided great websites for in each individual uh, department under the executive branch of your government. So you might you might you might want very well to take advantage of those um, by going to them and reading and learning. It's it's boring. It's tedious, but it prevents a lot of bad mistakes and yeah. bad choices, bad uh, circumstances. Yeah, apparently she and can't hear me. Choices, good circumstances. So. We want to make this even keel for you and make it easier as you're moving for, through the process for these t issues that you have to deal with are simplified, easier to understand, 
and uh, make for good decisions. And uh, so uh, what else do we need to cover with regards to this? So state, no, county, can't hear me. Uh, also, can't and, hear me. As, uh, uh, or see me, I guess. And city, because, of course, uh, when you have uh, major states uh, like California and New York as examples, uh, one of the reasons you're hearing people leaving them, yes, they're talking about taxes and everything else, but there's also regulations. So when you hear people talk about regulations, uh, these are the type of regulations they're talking about, uh, meaning that they, uh, you don't just have specific regulations about how to run your business uh, locally, but federally there's guidelines and regulations of how you have to run your business. So you have to be kept up with those regulations because they do interfere with your businesses. Um, I will give you a perfect example. I like using it. And that is uh, people working in a kitchen. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, the people would work in the kitchen. They wash their hands in, in the bathroom and uh, come back in the kitchen and work. And then back in the 80s, uh, a regulation was established by OSHA uh, and, and in which if you leave the kitchen, you come back, you have to go to the kitchen sink. It's, it's been specific. Can anybody out there hear me? For you to wash your hands before you continue to work, whether it's washing it dishes or preparing food in any way. So the, every restaurant had to have gone, had to now have the cost of putting in uh, piping and, and uh, plumbing for a sink in the kitchen. So these are the types of small issues that will affect your, your uh, balance sheet and your bottom line. Um, and the other aspect of uh, classification of your company is uh, has to do with also employees. Uh, if you're a sole proprietor, you can see me. Can you hear me? Working on developing something that's a far different uh, difference than having employees producing or manufacturing something that you have, packaging something you have, selling something you have, uh, being a sales force that goes out and represents you. Um, all these people have to be trained. All these people have to be uh, taught um, their job. There have to be guidelines about what their job is. There have to be guidelines to protect them with regards to the, the, the jobs they do. <clears throat> so once again, all these fall under specific regulations of both federally and state and even county and city. And you have to follow all these guidelines about uh, the provisions that you have to provide <clears throat> for employees and of course the biggest one is that good old uh, deal that you have now particularly with uh, all your government agencies is you collect the taxes for them isn't that great they don't have tax collectors in the modern age or the 20th and 21st century that's the company that you work for collects your taxes for the government unless <clears throat> you have a sole proprietor proprietorship or you have a, a privately owned a public or private loan corporation. Uh, the benefits there is that uh, you, in fact, don't have to pay your weekly or bi-weekly or monthly taxes. You can wait till the end of the year. You do have to pay in. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take him off for a minute and see, see if that helps. So <laughs> now you now you can't hear me. Uh, you there can't hear Shane. You know, now Shane's back. Again. So our new business plan and right. financial statement that you have to allow for is the employment yep. of, of uh, people and uh, providing taxes and the taxes that you become liable for now uh, as their employer. So a great many things start falling into place as you become an expanded company and why you've become a corporation. Yep. So I think Tom may be back now. We'll, uh, we'll take a look here and see if we can. Find I've been back. I've been here the whole time you've been talking. Well, that I, I don't, I'm not looking at a screen, Tom. I'm looking at information. So when you disappear, <laughs> you should say something when you come back. I did. I've been talking. I've sent you private chats. I haven't heard a word from you until just now. Anyway, Tom is back. So please proceed with what you'd like to <laughs> provide to everybody. Yeah, I've been, I've been talking to you for half an hour. No. <laughs> Yes, I have. That's okay. You're here now. You can take the last 10 minutes. Fire yeah. away, good guy. Well, read the comments. <laughs> I, I don't do that uh, when I'm okay. doing the work. I, under you know, I, I understand that, but that's, you I, would I have. Form the people watching us. So that's you would I'm have doing. known that I was here. Oh, well. Rankle me after the show. Okay, Tom. I will. You're I will. Time. I take will. For now. sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I will for sure. Yeah, great information, though. <laughs> I like that part. Uh, we were going to do subchapter uh, S corporations uh, as well. Um, and uh, this is actually a C corp with an S corp declaration. So uh, there are some limitations to this. You can only have 100 uh, shareholders. And uh, uh, that's the uh, that's probably the uh, the biggest difference. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, it, it's a corporation that's designed to avoid the double taxation of regular C corps. And we probably didn't talk about double taxation in the C corp part because uh, we have uh, we have uh, yeah, corporate dollars are taxed twice. Uh, they're taxed once on the profit and then they're taxed again when they're paid out in dividends or uh, to the uh, uh, shareholders. So each dollar is taxed twice of the profit dollars. So um, just to clear that up for you. And the other thing, uh, let's see, uh, uh, not all states uh, tax S-Corps equally. Uh, but uh, most recognize them same way the federal government does and taxes shareholders accordingly. Some state taxes uh, S-Corps on profits above a specified limit, and other states don't recognize the S-Corp election at all, simply treating the business as a C-Corp. So you need to be careful in where you are and uh, make sure that you register with the uh, uh, register with the IRS to get the C Corp or the S Corp status, and um, that will uh, take care of it. And uh, the S Corps uh, have an independent life, just like C Corps. If a shareholder leaves the company or sells his or her share, uh, the uh, corporation can go along undisturbed. And this, that's the same with the uh, with the uh, S uh, C Corp as well. So, um, and uh, in the S Corp. Um, you uh, you would have to uh, do some things like in the C corp like uh, minutes. You got to keep minutes. You got to keep uh, all of the uh, things going. So uh, uh, you've got to have uh, uh, board members, secretary, treasurer, presidents, vice presidents, etc., whatever. So um, that's the. Uh, that's the S Corp. Uh, a lot of people sometimes move from an LLC to an S Corp if they want to raise money. Uh, as I say, you're limited to 100 stockholders. So um, that's where we that's where we are. So um, that's it. And uh, let's see. Next, uh, we've got the nonprofit corporation. And uh, not much to know about this one. You'll be a 501c3. Uh, People don't make profit. The profit goes into the company. So uh, that's um, pretty much it. The only thing you need to remember about a nonprofit is that if you disband the nonprofit for some reason, you have to uh, uh, designate the money to another nonprofit. You can't divide it up among the people who started the, the uh, nonprofit corporation. So the money has to remain in a charitable uh, 501c3 status uh, as um, at that as that goes along. So, so I think uh, let's see. Do we have any questions that we didn't do? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I don't think so. And you might want to mention about the NGO, the non-government organization, which is similar to a non-profit uh, corporate, mm -hmm. and uh, that that is also used very often by philanthropists uh, who have their own great wealth. Uh, they set up a non-government organization that they fund themselves independently and yeah. provide all the necessary costs uh, involved, in, including what we're talking about. So that that's a specific exception, but it does want, it is one that's exempt if you happen to know someone that's very wealthy, a billionaire or multimillionaire, and mm -hmm. you have a charitable idea, then you can put together an NGO, non-government organization, and ask them to... Uh, you know, fund it, and uh, they may very well like to because they can write it off. It's an expense for them. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Market wrap up, Shane. All right. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Let me just get over here. 
Uh, where are we? Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at this. Commodities are popping along. Uh, the Brenton, Europe, is, oil is 54.37, 50.79 in Mexico. Gasoline nationally is $1.47 a gallon. And heating oil is a 1.53. So <clears throat> it's moving up because, of course, the middle of the year and the, the cost of winter has been mild, actually. Gold's at 19.11, down 6, uh, 7.12. Silver's down to 27 uh, and 5 cents, down uh, 24 cents. <clears throat> and soybeans <clears throat> down 15 to 1353. Wheat's at 641, down 650. And uh, as we like to do for people, sometimes on Saturday, we cover all co other commodities, but we're not going to today. Now, the U.S., 10 years at, uh, at 1.09. So, my goodness gracious, it's moving up, which uh, means people are selling it. So, it's up uh, 4 cents today. Uh, that's because the U.S. currency is uh, weakening still against the euro. It's at 123. Uh, the British sterling is 136. And the Canadian dollar is 126, another basis point. Wow. We're moving to strength because of oil and, and other commodities around the world. So there you go. That's our principal uh, market uh, wrap up for the day. All right. Well, that pretty well wraps up uh, what we've got going on today. So, hey, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and ring the little notification bell. You'll find that right below the podcast uh, down on the screen there. And just click subscribe, and that'll bring up this little bell. And click on that, and you'll always be notified when we are going to be back on uh, on the air. So, And don't forget, uh, of course, uh, we are on uh, tomorrow. Uh, we are on Saturday with our political show and uh, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click listen now at KMMSAM.com. And uh, replays of this show and that show will be uh, on. Uh, you can watch or listen to past shows at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Jane's podcast. And thanks for watching and listening as always. Uh, let's see. we got one more comment here we need to uh, get in here. I've uh, got a couple more, it looks like. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, have a good day and sorry about the mess up. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Shane missed me on Talky Talky Drugs <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, great show. Lots of information. Thank you, Linda, very much. Appreciate that uh, very, very much. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for being here. And uh, say goodbye, Shane. Indeed, be uh, happy and be cherishable, charitable to folks and live in the moment and live to work. All yep. right. Amen. All right. Don't forget, we're on tomorrow, 8 to 11 Mountain Time at KMMSAM.com. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I believe, is Friday, Tom. Oh, you're right. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll be on Saturday. Let, let Saturday, her... 8 to 11. I'm, I'm used to us being uh, closing our week on Friday. But... <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow is Friday the, the, the eighth, and we're tomorrow on, is Friday ninth. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, tomorrow the uh, cable people are coming to see if they can do something with my internet. <laughs> so, because <laughs> it does kind of come come and go sometimes. So, all right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, hey, we'll see everybody on Saturday, eight to eleven. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, joining our family. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, like and comment. And uh, we'll see everybody on Saturday.